What's up guys? We're so hey pumped to be serving with you today, coming at you. West Side Movement, we are so excited that we just were able to drop off groceries for over, what, four or three locations of living homes. Thank you so much for your giving. You guys rock. From the Rosner clan, we love you. Well, hey, welcome everybody back to another church online here from all of us at Westside Movement. Welcome. I'm so glad that you're hanging out with us again this morning online. Whoop, whoop. You know, we're calling these Sunday morning house parties. And, you know, until our governor lifts our, you know, stay at home order here in the state of Minnesota, our, stay, our, our Sunday morning house parties are going to actually have to be here online. But, man, we can't wait until we can actually have Sunday morning house parties with you at in your home and in our church and do all of those things all over again. So, man, I'm, I'm excited that you're here with us. Now, for those of you, I just want to throw something out there for you. I keep getting the question from so many people uh, because you know, a lot of you, you're, you've been locked up in your house and you're like ready and you're raring to go and some of you have been praying and some of you have been like, you, you're just waiting for the governor to lift that band so you can start to gather and, 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 you, and, and you know that there are needs that are out there and and you're just, you want to be a part. So here, let me tell you how you can be a part and what you can do, okay? Couple of things. Keep engaging with church online. Like the videos, share the videos. Continue to look for opportunities to serve people. Continue to pray for us, for the church, for your neighbors, for your family, for your friend. Most of all, lean into your relationship with God like never before because that's where life really comes from and he'll lead you into all the next steps. Man, we're doing some outreach around here. I know that you heard that last week, man, we gave hundreds of pounds of groceries away to seniors that were in need. That's all because of what you guys are doing because you decided to show up and help us serve and you're giving financially. And so thank you so much for your generosity during this time. It's really enabling us to continue to serve our community in really unique ways to meet really important needs. And it allows us to continue to have church online so that we can experience this with you. Now, having said all of that, we're going to go into this morning's message. We are wrapping up this series that we've been in called The Great Awakening. God just put it on my heart to pray that people would be awakened to everything that God has for them in this season. Man, I don't wanna just see some temporary move of God happen in the earth. I don't wanna see a temporary move of God happen in your life. Man, I wanna see people awakened, a great awakening in the lives of people all over the place, and that's including you. Because there are some benefits, there are some things that God wants for our life. The reason why Jesus came to the earth, why he lived his death, burial, and resurrection was so that you could have a relationship with God, so that you didn't have to feel far from God, God. And through that, he adds so many other things to our lives. And I think so many Christians, so many people that believe, you know, they, they receive Jesus' salvation. They receive that experience on the cross. And, and, and it's the most important experience, okay? Like experiencing Jesus' salvation is the first and most important benefit and gift that you can ever have. Everything else flows out of that. But I feel like so many people, we just stop there. 
and we miss out on all the other great things that God has for us. He just wants, he wants to get so many other things into your life and that's what this series has really been about. I believe that right now, more than any other time, maybe in a generation, people are just open to what God really wants to do in their lives. Maybe you're awakening to who Jesus really wants to be in your life. I don't know. But I know this, that God is always in a constant state of movement. He's given you everything you need for life and godliness, and he's asking you to take the steps with him so he can lead you and guide you in this life, so you can go on this great adventure with him. You know, when it comes to the things of God, so many people, it's just so easy, especially in these times, to get just so self-focused, and we kind of forget about all the great things that God has done for us in our lives. As a matter of fact, our theme verse for this whole series has been Psalm 103, verses two through five, and I'm gonna finish up this series with, this same, with these same verses, and this is what David says. He's prophesying. As a matter of fact, he's praising God, talking to God, and he begins to prophesy about all that God would do in your life through salvation. He says this, let all that I am praise the Lord. May I never forget the good things he does for me. And that's really, isn't that the truth, man? When we're disconnected from God or we're disconnected from other people, you know, it's really easy to get focused on ourselves and get stuck into our own stuff. We get short-sighted. We can only see kind of our own stuff and what's affecting us. But God's saying, hey, I got more for you. And here's David, like King David, the man that God said is a man after his own heart. Even he had to say, Lord, don't let me forget all the good things that you have for my life. Like people have, we have a gravitational pull to forget about everything that God wants to do, all the gifts that he has for us, all the benefits of being a members in his house, especially if you've been surrounded by any pain in your life. Sometimes it's hard to just see out of that, and we talked about that last week. And then he goes on to say in verse three, he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. He redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies. He fills my life with good things. My youth is renewed like the eagles. And we're gonna, we're, we're gonna focus there. Every one of us, because we're just human beings, we have a gravitational pull to forget. Even King David right here, the man that was called the man after God's own heart, even he had these moments, this propensity to forget the good things that God has for his life. And so we're gonna experience some of the same stuff. It goes on to say in verse three, he forgives all my sins and heals all my diseases. And that's not just he, our physical healing, that's also like some of our mental, emotional healing, all of our dis- eases. And I know that some of us, man, uh, this whole COVID thing has kind of messed up, messed with us a little bit, and we're, we're feeling uneasy about it. Man, God wants to heal that in you. Verse 4, he redeems me from death and crowns me with love and tender mercies, and now he fills my life with good things so that my youth is renewed like the eagles. You know, we've talked about these five good things that God gives us through Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection. And in week one, we talked about how he frees us from sin. Week two, we talked about how he heals us physically and emotionally. We talked about how he rescues us from Satan's plan. We, uh, last week, we, we talked about how he helps us grow and bring some transformation to our lives. And this week, I wanna talk about how he gives you good things and strengthens you to use those good things. As a matter of fact, 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8 says this, and God will generously provide all you need. Then you will always have everything you need and plenty left over to share with others. As a matter of fact, let me stop right there and just say, hey, happy Mother's Day, moms. This is like your verse right here. Every mom I know, especially now, like in our house, my wife, she, she, she's a mom, she's a mom of three boys, and she's working right now to just make sure that the family and that the house is running properly. And you know what? She's also got a job that she's working within the church, and she's just giving. And it seems like she's more joyful and happier about it than ever before. Why? Because God has given her to do that. And there's so many of you moms out there, like you just have this special capacity to give even d- during hard times where like, man, you're, you're 
you're giving to your kids. Some of you, you're homeschooling your kids. You've been homeschooling your kids, and it was really hard in the beginning, and now you've seen how God's brought you grace to be able to do it. And others of you, you know, you're just cooking on a regular basis, but you're doing it, and God's gracing you to do it. See, I love this scripture because, man, God gives us, he always makes sure we have everything we need and plenty left over to share with others. Sometimes that's our strength and our energy. Sometimes that's stuff. Man, I, I don't know what that is in your context. In the context of this scripture, he's actually talking about money. Like God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing to others. Like this church, we're able to go and just give hundreds of pounds of groceries away because we partnered with people that wanted to give groceries. Like they actually had the capacity to do it. And we're going and we're giving these groceries to senior citizens on a fixed income that don't have the capacity, they don't have the additional money to just run to Costco and stock up, leave their house. So you know what? God made sure that there were people that had more than enough so that they could meet the need that was in front of them. This is what God does for us. He pours good things into our lives. And then what does he do? He gives us the strength to be able to use those good things. Man, that's what God wants to do in and through your life. One of the reasons why Jesus came to die on the cross, uh, 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 to go to the cross for our sins, he died, he rose again to pour good things into your life, to bless you so that you can be a blessing. You know, the other night I was outside walking around and I cannot confirm nor deny whether I was abiding by the stay at home order, Um, but I can tell you this, I was outside at nighttime I looked up into the sky and I saw this one super bright star off to the west. And I was all excited trying to find out what it was and, you know, so that I could create some sermon illustration out of it. <laughs> and, it and all of a sudden, you know what it was? It was just the International Space Station. It was like no big deal, right? I mean, it was cool looking, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And so I was a little bit let down. But as I looked, uh, right above it was Orion's Belt. So I don't know if you've ever looked in the sky and, and you've seen Orion's Belt. And when I saw Orion's Belt, it instantly reminded me of a story from Scripture. As a matter of fact, in Job chapter 38, verse 31 God is speaking to Job. You know, Job had a rough life. Like, he just had some rough time. He went through some tests and trials. He lost family members. He lost fortunes. His friends kind of turned on him. As a matter of fact, he had friends that were lying to him about who God was in his life. And, and, and finally, God was like, all right, Job, I've kind of had enough of your complaining. And he starts to speak into Job's life and starts to question him. And one of the questions that God asked Job is this in verse 31. He says, can you bind the chains of the Pilatus? Can you loosen Orion's belt? You know what's so fascinating about that? And if, if you're a person that kind of likes looking up on a clear starry night, you can see Orion's belt. And if you've noticed, of the three stars, there's three stars in Orion's belt. One of the stars is a little further away than the other two. Well, what's interesting about that is that Job was written thousands of years before the telescope was ever invented. As a matter of fact, until the Hubble telescope was invented, we didn't even find out that that one star that's a little further away is constantly moving just a little bit further away from the other two. And God speaks to Job and says, hey, are you the one that loosens Orion's belt. Isn't that cool? Man, I love scripture. I love how God's word just uh, brings, brings life alive to us and just proves itself to be true over and over again. It's just fascinating to me. You know, it's a cool story about Job's life because his life was fascinating. You know, as he was going through some of his Pro, you know, just, I, I'd say problems, but man, you had a lot of challenges in life, and maybe you've got some challenges in your life as well. I just want to look at his life for a minute and see what God really was trying to do in and through him, and I want to point it out and see if God can do the same thing in your life. I, I, I believe he can. Check this out. Here's, here's Job. He's going through just unimaginable pain. 
You know, I've got a good friend of mine. He, you know, he, he just lost his, his brother, and I can't even imagine what that pain is like. I remember what it was like when I lost my mom, when I lost my dad. And obviously, as believers, right, man, we, we, we don't grieve as those that don't have any hope. Like, man, we have the hope. We know that our future, our ultimate future is secure, and it brings faith. That faith brings strength, and it brings hope to our lives, knowing that we're gonna see those people again. But I can't imagine in this moment you know, lo- actually losing, you know, family, like, like wife and kids and having your friends turn on you and losing all your money and, and, and your stuff. And, and God goes through this whole discourse with Job. As a matter of fact, watch this in Job chapter 38, verse 1 and 2. It says, Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm, and he said, Who is it that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? In other words, what he's saying is, is hey, who do you think you are, right? And I love this. There's just something about, like, I love reading humor into scripture, but also, you know, there's something about me as kind of a type A man that I just, I just like this. And, and, and he goes on, he says this in verse three. He says, brace yourself like a man. I will question you and you shall answer me. And he goes through almost the entire creation. He's asking Job what he knows of these things. Like, like, are you the one who knows where the storehouses of snow are? Do you know where hail is for the time of war upon the earth? Do you know who created the eagle? And he just goes into all of these amazing questions about all of creation. And here's Job's response about halfway through in, in Job chapter 40. He goes, hey, listen, I'm unworthy. How can I reply to you? As a matter of fact, what he's saying is he's not saying, oh, Lord, I'm so unworthy. He's actually like a teenager giving God a little lip, like, like, oh God, like, I mean, how could I ever speak back to you? Like, I could never say anything to those things, you know? Like, he's absolutely being a buster. And so God goes, okay, well, I think I need to go on for another chapter about all the things I've created and see if Job gets it, right? Like, like I gotta, you know, hey, you know, knock on that thick skull a little bit. I think Job was a little bit like me if I were to be completely honest. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, took me a couple times to get it through my thick head too, all the good things that God wanted for my life. And so God's going through this with Job and then Job finally, he gets it and he says, I take back everything that I ever said. I sit in dust and ashes, and he says this, to show my repentance. Listen, this is the key to the blessing of God coming alive in your life. It's this idea of repentance. That one day we're walking one way, and something came alive, a truth came alive to us, and we just turned our lives, and we began to go another way. You know, during this whole series of the Great Awakening, we were talking about, man, God, God putting these good things in our lives so we could walk the path that he has for us. Sometimes we get off that path, and sometimes we, we take these crossroads of, of different paths that look good. But repentance is, is when we get off path, we just turn so that we can be back on path. As a matter of fact, that's what repentance means. It just means to turn around. That's it. It just means to make that decision to turn around. And here's Job. He finally gets it. And he's, he's like, man, Lord, I'm sorry. I repent. I see now who it is you really are in my life, even though I had all of this crazy stuff happen to me and I had my friends were actually lying to me about who you are God, you are God, and above you, there is no other. And in Job chapter 42, verses 10 through 12, it says that when Job prayed for his friends, the the Lord restored his entire fortune. In fact, the Lord gave him twice as much as he had before. Then all his brothers and sisters and former friends, they came and they feasted with him. I like how it says former friends. You know what I'm saying? Like some of you know what I'm talking about when I say former friends. You got some friends you need to kind of leave in the dust for a little bit. But even they got a chance to be blessed by Job's blessing. Watch this. And they consoled him and they comfort him because of all the trials, and you know, there are some of you where you've kind of been locked up in home, and you haven't been able to get around friends. 
Some of your religious freedoms have been taken from you in this time. <laughs> and kind of like Job, man, you, you, you would love to get around some people that would console you again. Man, that time is coming. Hang in there. So here's Job's friends. They'll come and they console him. And then verse 12, it says, So the Lord blessed Job in the second half of his life even more than in the beginning. The beauty of repentance is that, man, when you're going the wrong way and it comes alive to you and you you find out that you know that you're on the wrong path and you turn, all the benefits of God, all the good things that he wants to pour into your life, they come rushing back into your life. There are some of you right now, you know, just even from the sound of my voice, you've got a check in your heart right now. There is a face that is popping into your brain. There is something that you're doing currently that you know that God is saying, hey, let me heal you of that. Repent, just turn away from that so that I can pour some good things into your life. Listen, all it took was repentance to unlock the good things that God has for us. And God wants to bless you so that you can be a blessing in this life. But it all starts with having that relationship right with God. All of it. Jesus said in Matthew chapter six, if we'll seek him, he adds all that other stuff into our life. If we'll love him and spend time with him, man, he just works all these other things out in our life. And I don't know where you are today, in this whole process. But you need to take a next step. And maybe it's you need to get alone with the Lord and do some business and talk to him about your life. Maybe you're far from God today. And it's time for you to come home and to come close. Man, you can do that. I'm gonna show you how. Would you, just right there, wherever you are, (laughs) you're watching this on a screen somewhere, would you just bow your head and close your eyes and just have a moment with the Lord? We're gonna get ready and worship here in just a moment. And I wanna make this your special moment with God. Would you pray this with me? Just say, Jesus, forgive me. I'm not perfect. Come into my life. Take my life so I can live for you and experience all the good things that you have for me today. In Jesus' name, amen. Man, listen, we love you. We miss you. And if you're on this video and you're not, you're not a West Sider, there's a way that you can connect with us. Just text the word, we move, like one word, W-E-M-O-V-E, to the number 97000, 97000. We'll get some information to you and give you some next steps this week. We love you. Come on now, stand up and let's worship. God, it is so good to be in your presence this morning. And are you hurting and broken within? Oh, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Don't come to
Amen. Thank you.